guys. Okay. Good afternoon, go. folks in um, in Facebook and YouTube land. We are so sorry we have to come on late. It was due to some technical problems. But this is your famous broom show, and we are about to begin our discussion. But first of all, the music we have that uh, roll out the curtain to see what is behind the curtain. Behind the curtain, we discuss political issues of the Republic of Liberia, especially that pertaining to our party, the Liberian People's Party. Tonight, we will be promoting or discussing issues about our major fundraiser that is about to take place in Minnesota on the 24th of June, 2023, to be precise, in Brooklyn, in Brooklyn Park, right? Is that Brooklyn Park? Yeah, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Park. Okay, Brooklyn. Brooklyn Park. But before then, let bring let bring let bring down the curtain with with our famous uh, Liberian music. Music being played in honor of our of our standard bearer, Councilor Tiawan Se Gonglo, the man of the people. Here you go. Thank you, LV. A wrong step by a leader is a warning to the followers. Our love writer is here. The one come all the way. Hey, 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 Lima no fire one without Papa Tiawa from Rombo Nuila. You know one way out. Big money, my evening, you are what they have. Never look for you. 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 Never Corruption la nye pona Me wo kwa wa yi ba wo ne ala wo E la nye yi wa wo Anpo ni ma no se ga nye yi wa to Wende yi pa na po ne Kanu kukia wo re Kanu kukia wa kan wo lo mwe Mwo pa ya ya kwa E tia wa kwa yi kwa kwa ya ya kwa Kanu wo pa ka ya Tani <laughs> Something Zota Numbebe Asia No go my man Wapa you won't go Wapo wa no seno and then you folk let him Babo Nuile Congo Congo you don't go away if I look at Pastor, 
Okay, yeah, you. I'm sorry. Oh my goodness, I was on, I was on mute. How you do, uh, Sissy? How are you, sir? I am well. How you doing, hey, Joe? How you doing? Okay, I sent a couple of texts to find out uh, what was going on again. But anyway, I know by the grace of God, things are okay. Yeah, and I responded. Okay. Thank you, though, for the concern. Oh, okay. I didn't. Okay, I didn't. My, my brother, my brother, this is how are you? I'm okay, Joe. How you doing, man? I can remember what happened to me. You were dead for me. I'm sorry for that. Oh, yeah. Sorry, right, man. Yeah, those things can happen, but you go home already? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, thank okay, God. Joe, I'm that's very good. That's fine. <laughs> that's fine. I just said, uh, that's why I just let it in one notch yet. Okay, yeah. uh, folks in, 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 in Facebook and uh, YouTube land. Tonight, we're going to discuss two issues. We are so sorry for uh, the late opening of our program due to some technical uh, problems. However, better late than never. Tonight, we'll be discussing the major fundraiser that will be taking place in Minnesota to be precise, Brooklyn Park. And then we're also going to be discussing areas that our political leader have traveled, Councillor Chawan Se Gongwe, the immense sacrifices he has made for the Liberian people, the love that he has shown in that way. There is a major quote. The quote says that if you do good anywhere, you have done that good everywhere. If you see people, don't pass by them because they are not stones. They are people. If you want to be a political leader, if you want to be a leader for the Republic of Liberia or anywhere else, you must reach to those who will give you power. They are not stones. They are people that you will need to talk to. Tonight we have with us, our guest is Joe Moneyburn, the chairman for, the, for Team Gonglo in Minnesota and the executive director for Tim Gonglo in Minnesota. He's also the chairperson for the fundraiser in Minnesota. We're happy to have you tonight, uh, Mr. Joe Moneyburn. Thank you for you? having Thank you for having me. And your hosts tonight, we are Junius D. Zoga II and Comrade Sese Goya. Sese Goya, sorry, the last time when I sent your name, I removed the H. <laughs> oh, I know I got to put the H back. And I, a lot of people do that. They forget. Oh, that. <laughs> yes. Uh, before we start up, before we start up, uh, Joe, can you tell a little bit about your fundraiser? Yeah. Yeah, I can go ahead and tell you a little bit about the fundraiser. And and there will be a fundraiser. But you have on the package, yes. There will be a fundraiser, as you said, um, on the 24th of this month. Uh, June 24th, precisely in the Broken Park, and the full address will be in the chat room, you know, and, and at that fundraiser, you know, and in fact, what is the purpose of the fundraiser? The purpose of the fundraiser is to help our standard burial um, to buttress the financial capability of our standard burial for this coming campaign. You know, we, we usually do that, we've been doing that, you know, since the campaign is getting closer, so we decided to have a fundraiser to portrait uh, financially his uh, campaign. And then people who participate in the fundraiser are people who work for their own money, you know, and in Minnesota and in the U.S., you know, 
it's a clean money that we work for hard and we decided to come together and then put in whatever we can you know to help Castle Gongo because of the love that we have for our senator you know that has been carried on and at that fundraiser we we invited a lot of people and then we printed t-shirts that we'll be wearing on that day you know and then because the fundraiser is a is is, is, is done with the LPP and and people that live in Minnesota that support Consular Gongolo or part of Team Gongolo Minnesota. That is a joint thing with LPP. So I've been an LPP member, been heading it. So most of the LPP guys are on board and then we're doing it together. So we printed t shirts that has an LPP logo on it that we'll be wearing on our day, on a Saturday. Everyone will be wearing the t shirt. And then we also encourage everyone of us that in the US that support, support Consular Gongolo, we should buy the minimum of two t shirts. And then, and then put in uh, at least the minimum of $100, you know, as our contribution besides the two t-shirts. So the reason why we ask to buy it, everybody buying two t-shirts is that is to support the fundraiser. You can buy two and then give one to anyone. And all those that live in Minnesota will be purchasing a t-shirt for $20 for the t-shirts, for one t-shirt. So when you're buying two, it will be like $40 for two of the t-shirts. And your contribution to the fundraiser will be minimum of Hundred dollars. You can do hundred dollars above, but if you want to, if you have the capacity, but we say minimum of hundred dollars so that everybody can be able to afford to put money on the cash app. That is the idea. And then uh, normally, you know, there will be the program will be an outdoor program, you know, and then we we can you know one, some of our members can be there also and and. Canopies, we got canopies, we got chairs, we got everything ready, and then it'll be an outdoor program. And then our women will be decorating the place, you know, they have everything ready already. The, the, the chairs, you know, the tables will be decorated with lights outside. You know, you know how decoration looks like. They are very good at decoration. So, and the program will be starting at 5 o'clock and 5 p.m., you know, to dawn. So, and there will be a lot of traditional music, you know, and fun, you know, and then a lot of food will be there. The women are bringing food. Normally, like I said, people who love Gonglo, we come together and do our own thing. So we don't spend any money for the food. The women bring in the food, and, you know, and then the men will bring the drinks. You know, that's what usually happen. All the men that will be coming there, they will bring a bottle, you know, and then the women will bring the food. So everything is already set. And, you know, so these are the kind of things you'll be expecting. And then I contacted some guys, you know, um, from the gym, because I usually go to the gym, and then to do some acrobats for us and they agree and so there's a possibility there will be some acrobatic performance there with the people from the gym so other you than the, other than other than just the fundraiser you're going to have a uh, fun where you're going to have uh, people performing there uh in our library where they will be fighting karate just how the president learned how to fight karate right? no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no karate. it may not be karate no, because no, um, no a little bit about uh, where do we send the money because uh there are a lot of people facing problem with how to how to uh uh, uh what you call maneuver in sending the money i don't know cash app is a cash app is not working or something i see it properly on the screen can you give a little bit of um uh, or the idea on how they can be able to send this. I think it should be clear, but uh, we want to hear that from the house's mouth. Can you tell yeah, us? okay. Okay, yeah. Right now, if you look at the screen, you'll see our cash app on the screen. is dollar sign FOG Minnesota. That's the cash app. So we encourage all those, you know, that live out of state. If you're not even living in, uh, if you don't live in Minnesota, you can send your contribution to our cash app. We already started mailing t-shirts for those that live in this, uh, live out of Minnesota. I went to the post office and mailed some t-shirts just the other day. So when you live out of, out of Minnesota, I already made an announcement so I cannot change it. You know, because those that live out of state, they, they suggested that the t-shirt should be $25 because of mailing fee. Actually, the t-shirt is $20 because we have to mail it to them. So they suggested that we should make it $25. So it stuck to $25. You know, even though when I went to mail it, it was above that, you know, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to change it. I would sacrifice and put the balance money and continue to, to mail it because I wouldn't want to change the statement. You know, so it's, it's still $25 for those that live out of state. So what it did, the T-shirt are mailed. And if you want your T-shirt to be mailed, you just, you know, send your address, you know, and to me or anyone who, you know, familiar with Team Gongola Minnesota, when you send your address, they will, they will send it to me. And then you send your money on the cash app, the cash app that you see there. And then when you send your money on the cash app, 
then you in a description corner you, you you put in for t-shirts because we want to monitor how funds are being and uh, how we carry on our fundraising so when you put in the description uh, area t-shirts then you please try to uh, send your your receipt you know in our chat room if you're part of the chat room you send a receipt in the chat room if not if you're not part of the chat room you can send a receipt to any of the lpp members and it will forward it to the chat room that is if you are an lpp member and then you're out of uh, minnesota or if you send your information to me you know and, and how to call it and after you put your money in the cash app and then you guess send your, you text me and say well i guess pay my money in the cash app you know and then i will confirm that with the, the treasurer and then you send your your address also now immediately mail your t-shirt so if you want to send your information to me and directly not the money but uh, information after you send the cash app my number will be seven my number is seven six seven six three three one eight nine six three zero i will call you again seven six three three one eight nine six uh, thank you joe we're going to be bringing you up uh interval at interval so you can so our people can hear whatever you're going to be saying uh at an interval whenever we talk so if you if you want to say everything and then we'll bring you back you will, you will still be repeating so we want you to hold on okay. to some of them and then we'll all right bring you back. for okay. now ladies and gentlemen I want to bring to you uh, Councillor Tawan Gonglo has been telling the public that there is a different way in doing things. He wants to show the Liberian people, his country people, that there is a different way of leading a government in a country. He has shown that when he was head of the Bad Association. And from age 33, he has challenged power, those who have not been able to lead the country in the proper way. Now, uh, we've been hearing that all of the uh, experiments, like the uh, presidential experiments, because the road situation in our country is so bad, especially at the reading season, they are using uh, our neighboring countries to go to some of the counties that are closer to those borders because these people got good roles, and then they will get into that county and begin to run their, uh, let's say, establish a friendship or make themselves known. But here is Councillor Tawang Gonglo. He remained consistent. His saying has coherence. He is saying that it's a different way to do things. I am not going to travel to a different country to come to Liberia, bypassing the bar routes. I'm going to walk into the bar route, and so people can know that when I become president tomorrow, once I've given the opportunity for which I'm requesting from the Liberian people, this is what I'm going to do. But before then, I must feel the heat. I'm going to show you a video. I'm going to show you a video tonight which shows how this man, Councillor Tiawan Se Gonglo, intend to lead that Liberia differently when he said, we can lead our country or the government can lead country differently. I want you to look at this. I want you to look at this video. And then from there, we'll be discussing that video. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is, there you go. That was one of the visits 
that the standard bearer of the Liberian People's Party made, especially in Tuzo, the home of the late President Samia Kayando. You saw that route. We have other video that we're going to show where he took off his slippers and walked in the mud like that. Councillor Gonglo began to tell people, he continued to tell people that there is a different way to lead the country. Our panelists, Joe, and then one of the hosts, Sissi, we're going to discuss this. Let's put in our knowledge to the people and tell them, how do you guys, what comment do you have to make about this sacrifice that the presidential candidate Councillor Tawang Se Gonglo has made. I know other people sitting in our car, if it were with the other people, I know when he come by, they will carry in the hospital because it's not physically fit. Goya, tell us something about what you make of that video. Well, uh, in, in leadership, uh, most times uh, uh, people follow the leader, right? And, and, I, and if I remember, a, I'm going to paraphrase this a little bit. There's a quote attributed to, um, uh, to Alexander the Great. And he says, uh, uh, I am not afraid of a pack of lions that are led by a sheep, but I'm rather afraid of a flock of sheep that's led by a lion. It is the leader that leads, that sets the pace. And the people keep asking, don't sell us a pig in a blanket. Don't sell us a pig in a bag. Well, Councillor Tewansi Gonglo is letting the pig out to let you know how he's going to lead. Whatever he's not going to expect of himself, he's not going to expect of anybody else. And if Liberia must change, we must, we must have leaders who are willing to demand of themselves what the demand of the Liberian people. So I am not surprised in the least bit when I see Councillor Tewan Gonglo on the roads and his cars are getting stuck. And at one point in time, he even had a story about sleeping on the side of the road. And I think at around about three, three in the morning, they, you know, people came and woke him up. He was sleeping in the bush. Um, just like ordinary Liberians who cars get broken down and get stuck in the, on the highways and sleep in the bushes. So the Liberian people, I think, uh, have a clear choice, a clear chance to select and elect a leader who doesn't only understand what it means to sit in an air-conditioned office, but understand what it means for your car to break down when you have an emergency and you have to go to the southeast and you're thinking you got to make it in two days before your trip becomes one week. He understands that because he's gone through that. This is not something that he's reading through research that his cabinet ministers are going to come to tell him. This is something that he is seeing. He's not flying helicopter to go there. He's not going the way the ordinary Liberian people don't go. He's going through the same pains. He's being forged through the same fire that the Liberian people have been forged through. So when I see that video for me, as an ardent supporter of Taiwan Seer Gonglo on principle, those are some of the reasons why I choose to follow this guy. Because he talks the talks, he walks the walks, and he lives the life that he's trying to ask the Liberian people to give him a chance to, 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 to change. And so this is not an elite. This is by no means somebody who doesn't understand what it means to be in the private sector. He owns his own law from the private law from the highest Liberian. He's worked in government. He's worked out of government. He's worked for money and he worked, he worked without money. He's worked even when people that he was defending could not afford to pay him back. And so all I can say, you ask the question, and sorry for rambling because I can talk all day to this guy. But, but, but Sissi, let me, let, me, let me hold you there, Sissi. Uh, Councillor Gonglo, Councillor Tiawan Gonglo, the poor man lawyer, but then, I mean, he, he, he has no idea about, I mean, he, he has not decided to run as the president. And so he couldn't have gone into the bush. But don't you, I mean, others are looking at it as, okay, uh, because he wants the vote of the people, but when, when he's up there, uh, I don't think he's going to walk back there. How do you make? How will you make up that statement? How will you defend your, your your candidate? Well, that is that is that is fair. But what I would point people to is, for example, the councillor owns his most expensive house in, in his hometown, not in Monrovia. So, 
You tell me when people are buying skyscrapers or people are buying really, I mean, a, a parcel of lands in, in Monroe in a single bill that is very expensive. And don't tell me the counselor couldn't have done that. He could have if he wanted to. But it was a message this man was sending way before he was even thinking about becoming president. He built his most expensive home in his village. He goes to his village every time. And so if you are telling me that Tier 1 is not doing that right now because he's trying to be president, I say, look to where he invested his most money. In his village. And, and, so, and so that was in whole water. And yes, All right. Then we'll money. go to Joe. Now let's hear from Joe. Joe what, what, what do you have to say? You know Councillor Tia Wan Gonglo. You, you here to talk about him. What Sese is saying, what have you to say about that? Tell us. Yeah, to, to buttress what, what uh, my brother is saying, Sese, you know, um, before uh, Councillor, he was not thinking, he, we call him a poor man lawyer. When he started rendering services to the poor people, like my brother said, you know, pleading cases, you know, standing for them in court without being paid, he didn't, he wasn't thinking about being president. He wasn't thinking about running as a president. He's just a, he just a nice man who cares for his people. He's a philanthropic. That's how he looks like. You know, so that's his lifestyle. He always like to be there for the poor people. So the reason why, you know, what he what would petition him to run, you know, after he thought of it for a long while and he said, okay, let me try to do this because we, feel, we saw the quality in him and the integrity. So he was petitioned to run. So uh, he being a project manager, he always said, I'm a project manager. I know, yeah, and if you are a project man manager, you must know a lot about that project before you manage a project. So by him being a project manager and you want to manage Liberia, so he has to see, you know, the problem that the librarians are going through. That's why he went there, you know, instead of passing through Africa, coast, like what other people doing, he went on a road, going through the mud, and a car gets stuck so many times in the mud, and he's walking through the mud and the mud stopping him all the way to his knees, like ordinary person. He could go through Africa coast like the rest of the political party leaders and go about do bypasses. But it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't make any sense if you want, if you're a real project manager and you want to govern the people, then you leave the rest of the people who are suffering, then you bypass them and go in, in, in other county. So that area where they have the mud, those villages, are they not part of, you know, Liberia, the village are not part of Liberia? Are those people not Liberians that you, you want to govern and you bypass them and you go through Africa to go to other county and leave them alone? Because Council of feels that they are part of Liberia, so he passed through them and he went through the suffering with the mosquitoes. To talk to them he could have done the same thing you know so only because of the love that he has for the country that's why he did what he did by passing through them and he's the only presidential candidate that did that you know and besides that the only man who has the experience to govern this country because Amos Sawyer then was the interim leader and then he was you know a special assistant to Amos Sawyer so he has the experience of how country is being governed so among all the candidates, he's the only one that has that experience, you know. So this is the time for librarians to open their eyes and look for somebody who can better do the job. And the best man to do that job, who cares for the librarian people, is counselor. And I will always, I will always, I will always say, leave this money issue. To see the man doesn't have money, you know. And we're looking at somebody that can transform the country, transform our youths to better people, because they're the ones that are going to replace us. In, in, in library we say but, in, in the future in the joe, future let me hold you right there joe let me hold you right there because you said something very interesting uh somebody talking about oh the man does not have money. my question is those who got the money now where did they get it from do they have they got problems? hold on one second brother those who have the money now and i can name about four or five of, of these people but i don't want to strike or anything tonight because we have short time to go the next time we come, I'm going to name about four or five people who now build fabulous homes in, in our country. My question is, if someone is saying he's a poor man, he does not have money, and, and the Liberian people are following people who got money, the question is, where do these people get this money from? Do they have farm or they have Dama, Dama, uh, 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 Dama waters? Tell me something about that. Okay. They got the money so like in Liberian English, you say from the cookie jar. Okay. You know, uh, yeah. No, no, and no. no, no, no. The... Let's go straight. Let's go straight. Tell us, I mean, there are a lot of people who don't know about what a, what a cookie jar is. Okay. Yeah, yeah, when you say cookie jars, they know. 
this is okay yeah. councillor gonglo this is a very good question that you just asked you know the the cookie jar is corruption okay you know when you're into government and then you do extraordinary you know that go beyond your salary you know that give you more money beyond what you are making that is corruption that is you extending your hand in the cookie jar that's what he didn't do he lived with his income and he rather start helping the poor people were fighting giving him money. So imagine all those people that you have, all the cases that he played for those poor people without asking them for money. If he had taken money from them, he would have some money by now. If he had done like other people and putting his hands in a uh, cookie jar, having extraordinary money, going through corruption, people bribing him, he would have had money like them by now. So because he didn't do that, that's what they say he doesn't have money. It's better to have clean money that is not enough than to have money. That you were taken by corrupt means. This is why we want to stop in Liberia. Because the, 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 the bread comes in Liberia is for everyone. The bread, the piece of bread we have in Liberia is for everyone. So the, the, the ordinary citizens are only e eating the crops. And the council is coming to make sure that everyone eats a piece of that bread. Not only the crops. Because Liberia, the crops have been going to the poor people. Now, if you watch the Liberian politics, the people who have the money, they have not gone to the various counties before. They've been playing politics right in Moravia. So the voters should have sense to know, ah, why are they coming here to us now? And they bringing stolen money to us, and they're giving us money. You know, could you imagine they have not gone to you? So they carry money to you now. So after they give the money to you, when you put them in power, you won't see them until after six years. You know, you won't see them until after six years. So, and well, then I, you... That's right. Yeah. Because, you know, people want to ask the question. There were some who were languaging or in other places you have to carry them to some uh, local boy shop and purchase things for them but when they begin when they when they uh took took when when they took power some started riding or those kind of vehicles that have or what they call the thing uh or, or gps and the rest of that the question is uh and now we cry here that the government does not have money but where do you take money from and build these fabulous houses now before we get to uh Sissy, tell us something about continue to tell us about the fundraiser Tell us, uh, you, you you were about to tell us the number and the rest of it. Tell us something about the uh, the, the fundraiser again, and then we'll finally go to CC and after a couple of minutes, we'll close off our show. Yeah, uh, the fundraiser, I said, uh, during the fundraiser, uh, I encourage people not to take physical cash because we want transparency. That's what we always do. We want to know how to monitor you know, uh, the money when it comes to financial report right after the fundraiser. So everybody should pay the money that they want for contribution and also for the t-shirt on the cash app. And the cash app is, is handled by our treasurer. She's the one that has the cash app. So is once you put your... Number again? That was a, let me just stop it. What was your number again? My, my, okay, my number is 763-318... Hold on, hold on. 763... 318... 318... 96-9630. Yeah, so ahead. now the reason why i gave my number is anybody who wants you know the, or anybody who already sent money to the cash app don't send the money to me you send the money to the cash app already say oh i just sent money to the cash app and i want two t-shirts well, i send this for my contribution so can you confirm and, and mail my t-shirt the reason why you get my number is so that you can send your address to me after you pay for two t-shirts you send your money to the cash app, like fifty dollars for the two t-shirts. Oh, I just sent two dollars to, uh, to the cash app for two t-shirts, and this is my address. So your address, you mail it. Uh, you, you send your address to me. Once you send it to me, then I will confirm the cash app with our treasure, you know, and then mail your t-shirts to you. That's what I give my number. But do not send money to me. Do not send any cash app to my phone. Send it to dollar sign F O G Minnesota. That's where the money goes for the contribution and the t-shirts. But only use my number and let me know that you send it for confirmation and and how to call it so that i can send you your t-shirts through your address you send me that's the reason why i give my number all right thank you so much uh folks um we came on a little bit late and normally we start by eight o'clock and in our show nine o'clock and we have to be precise with the time we again sorry for for the uh, the technical problems we have, but we're going to be here on Saturday at one o'clock p.m. At this time, I know we're going to come with uh, of, the, of the of the national of, uh, from the national headquarters, and we'll be discussing uh, uh, in detail the establishment of the of the party, and uh, we'll also be talking about membership 
and then we, we we will also have the time to, to showcase most of our legislative um, our experience. We I would like to hear a final word from our sister our Goya as pertaining to the question that I posed: What are we Liberian with stupid? The running behind people will say they get money, but the question remains: the unanswered question is where these people got the money from? Where they got the money from? They don't have a farm to operate. And we saw it in Monrovia here that some were just baking uh, uh, for, 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 for a little hundred dollars to go to the Kobo Shah right opposite their party headquarters and other things. And, um, and, but now they have fabulous homes and, and, and they ride out of the vehicles. They don't have farm. But where do they get the money from? And then people, and then the Liberian people, we're running behind them and say they have money, so we have to vote them. Tell us your last word onto that, uh, Comrade. I, I don't think the Liberian people are stupid. I, I like to frame this in a different in a different way. And I think that's what the council has been doing. It's telling the Liberian people how, how they've been robbed over the years of their just entitlement, their fair share to the national pie. And so I'll give you an example. When we're growing up in Monrovia, when somebody got a house and a fence and they put one light outside, that light right outside the fence, they play all the table, all the water market, and it would be in the evening time, right? They play people go for water market. Yes. And they play all of us that don't have lights in our houses will go gather to study. And they play all the crowd of boys and crowd again and can hang out. Then that person looks like they're very rich because what they have managed to do is to put one light outside in the midst of total darkness. And so when we see the librarian people following people for money, is because these people have managed to put a little bit of light outside. And they, they get these people to go and beg them for, for tuition for their children. They get these people to go and beg them for daily sustenance. So they rob these people and bring back peanuts and turn these Liberians who are very respectable people, Liberians are proud people, they turn them into beggars on their knees. And so what the council has been telling the Liberian people, that's the reason he's gone to villages and nooks and crannies that have never seen a presidential candidate since they did the country declare independence. To let the Liberian people know that a six cup of rice is not enough for six years of mortgaging your children's uh, future and your grandchildren's future. And so our Liberian people are not stupid. The people in power have turned respectable and otherwise decent people into beggars. And the counselor's quest is to turn these people back into the kings and queens and princes and princesses that they are to stand tall and hold their hands up high that you don't have to go to a home of somebody and sit in line to beg them for your daily bread. That is what the counselor is doing. And so for all these people that keep saying, calling themselves change, I say, you want to see the real change? Look for the man that's in the villages. Look for the man that built one of the, the most expensive headquarters of a party in Grand Gila, not in Monrovia. Look for the man that is out there trying to empower the Liberian people, that is in the villages, telling the people, tell me what you want. Not me as an elite coming to tell you what I'm going to do for you. The council has been asking people to tell him what they want, what their wishes are, what their visions are, what their missions are, what their thoughts are, because he's going to craft that into policy that benefits the Liberian people. So Liberian people are not stupid. They've just been turned into beggars and the council is on the course to turn them back to the rightful places of being kings and queens and princes and princesses. Thank you, Sese. Your last word, Joe. Well, uh, like my brother said, uh, I would like to call, uh, most of the time when I'm speaking, I'd like to speak to the voters. You know, and then what I want the, the voters to know, you know, and like for example, let me give an example. Like uh, our our president, our president is being hired. You know, take it as take the voters are employers. They hire the president to do a they piece are, of job. They are employer, not taking them. They are the yeah, employer. okay. They are employer. They hire you as a president to do a piece of job. That is transformation. They want their life to be changed. You know, that's why they hire you. So if if you perform. I know if you do your job and you don't do it well, like what happening right now, there's no transformation. You know, you have to be changed. You know, since it is time for this guy to be changed, and because the lives will not transform, we don't need to follow people who have money. Let's let's do the reality. Let's look at somebody who has the experience in the council of Gonglo. Like I said initially, he has the experience already. He know how gov uh, government, you know, how, how the country is governed, and he is an economist already. 
and also exact it will help Liberia, and Liberia will be better if he if he if he becomes president of Liberia because of the experience and because of the integrity. He's the best man. That is the reality. And leave this money issue. The money will fool you. Six years ago, the poor gave you t-shirts and gave you money. I don't know how, how much is the amount. I don't want to call the amount because that is not confirmed. But we know they gave money and t-shirts to everybody. You know, they bribed them to vote. And then you will let assume that you were like uh, six years old. Or let's say 18 years old. Because like 18, 18 years can vote. 18 years old, six years ago, they gave you t-shirts and they gave you money. And, you know to vote and then the six year expire you stay at the same position so you you sold yourself for t-shirts and small money and you still at the same position so that six you were 18 six plus 18 i think that's 24. so now you become 24 years old you stay at the same spot and you saw your your, your birthright you know for t-shirt and and, and 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 one bag of rest now you're 24 years old you come in again for somebody to give you t-shirt and 500 dollars or give you back of rest for another six years there will be six it will be 24 plus six you're getting old 24 plus six you stay to the same place you're not moving you're only selling yourself for t-shirt when they play music when they say Buga, oh you go there then they give you t-shirt they give you rest. You, oh, you put a man there you know 24 year old you are 24 year old now then you come and be another you come and another six years or 24 years because they give you the same book out oh you go there you see music they give you red oh you white t-shirt you are not thinking about your future you're getting old so council one transformation leave this money an issue you need we need we need programs for the youths to replace us tomorrow we're doing a lot of talking here we are we are blessed we're in the u.s even though we, we're getting older and then we need people to replace us tomorrow we'll go that's how we're supporting council so that the youth will benefit the country will be turned over to the youth our youths are riding motorbike they've been buying motorbike. they grow they're growing on motorbike and they're becoming adults by force yeah. you know Thank they're you. getting adults by force uh, let me tell so you. we need change in our government we need we let need me let me tell you let me tell you the experience i had when i was in liberia uh uh november to december i didn't get in any vehicle and I, I was on a motorbike and I was in the uh, Keke. And any of these young people you ask, do you love riding bike? He said, Babe, nothing to do. So we just got to. I said, So if there was an option, if tomorrow was the best day for you, where they have school and a job here, forget about the motorbike they're a good company here and there's a school here which one are you going to choose 85 percent of the answers to that question to that single question was i prefer to go to school my follow-up question was why you need money you're already about 25 they would say look baby man can get old we'll keep on learning but we learn the other people come here we will need to drive those trailer trucks that they are driving and taking away our money. So that go back to that goes back to what our conversation said when he said that look, we are not stupid. I agree with him, but the opportunities are not provided for our people. They continue to rob the young people. The government continue to rob the young people of their substance. The purpose of the government is to provide good health facility, to provide good education system, to provide jobs and opportunities for, 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 for those who are, who are uh, 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 at working age, to provide law and order for the country and defense of our people. But we see that today it's not happening. But let's turn down, let's close back the curtain with these words with this song. And I love this song because here you were never born as a senator. When you are elected as a senator, remember, even after 12 years, one day you're going to be out. Our, our, our plea is make laws that will be in favor of your citizen, including yourself, that if you are not 
a senator tomorrow, you can be able to benefit from that, from that, from that law that you have made. Unfortunately, many of our friends did not do. And here, they are all, all over in the place. Now, they want to be advocates and all of that. But let's listen to them. It's not LBR.com, my people. Capsize. There is no more time for you, brother. You gotta get come to our fundraiser June 24th, 2023, Minnesota. The video is off, so good. Zoga, we can see you. your video is off. All right. So, gentlemen and everyone in uh, our Facebook and YouTube, and this is how we draw the This is Zoga, we, we can see you. Zoga. We can see you, Zoga. Yeah, I'm coming back. This is how we close up our program tonight, our talk show tonight. You will see us again. But at this time, it's going to be daylight in Liberia. 1 o'clock Sunday, 1 o'clock GMT. It's not 1,300 hours GMT in Liberia. But it's going to be, what time here? No, it's going to be 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time here in the United States. And it's going to be 1,700 hours in Liberia. We see you. Thank you for joining us tonight, Joe and, and Sissy. Until then, see you guys on Saturday. Bye-bye. Thank you for having me. Bye. Yes, sir.